This is Eitan Weinstein. And I'm Naor Menninger. And you're listening to Two Nice Jewish Boys. These are turbulent times in Israel, with recent events casting a glaring spotlight on the country's judiciary system. The passing of the first law of the Netanyahu government, judiciary reform, which removes the reasonability clause from the Supreme Court, and the contentious law proposing changes to the committee to elect judges have ignited passionate debates around the system's flaws and challenges. Today we have the privilege of speaking with Emmy Palmo, an Israeli lawyer and esteemed civil servant who held the prestigious position of Director General of the Ministry of Justice from 2014 to 2019. During her 24-year tenure in the civil service, Emmy was appointed by the government to chair public committees addressing sensitive and controversial social and legal issues demonstrating her exceptional leadership skills and commitment to finding sustainable solutions for the betterment of Israeli society. As a leading expert in the field, Emmy Palmol's contributions extend far beyond her time in the Ministry of Justice. Her extensive experience in law and governance, coupled with her dedication to promoting diversity and inclusion in the government, has earned her national recognition. Notably, she is among the first 20 members of the Meta Oversight Board, tasked with making crucial and or controversial content moderation decisions on one of the world's largest social media platforms. Join us today as we delve into the intricacies of Israel's judiciary system, explore Emmy's remarkable career journey, and gain insights into her valuable work within the government and beyond. Thank you so much for joining us today, Emmy. How are you? Can I come every day? <laughs> <laughs> More than um, welcome. More and than bring welcome. my mother along. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, dive right for, into no, but it. I forgot to mention yes. that I have two wonderful kids. Okay, two Thank kids. You. Your biggest Thank accomplishments. You. Absolutely. Okay. Amazing. So I have to ask you one thing, just to start things off. You were inside. You saw how the hot dogs <laughs> are made. Oh yeah. The hot dog factory. Yeah. Um, can you understand? where the right wing, the pro-reform branch of, of Israel is coming from? Yes, the simple answer is yes. <clears throat> um, and I always will say yes, because um, I have the capability of understanding perspectives. It's part of my skills and it's part of my tools to be able First of all, you know, to understand different stakeholders on various issues. This is also many things that I've done during my tenure in the ministry. And beyond that, um, I've worked with all types of politicians along the years, both right wing, left wing, and whatever we call center in Israel. So I think I have a good perspective of their frustrations. I think they have many frustrations that have nothing to do with ideology of the civil service, as it is often uh, claimed, you know, that uh, politicians meet ideological civil servants and, and they don't allow them to do all kind of things. I just made a joke, actually, I met a minister the other day, and I was very proud of making him laugh, and <laughs> one time was that uh, I said, you know, they call them uh, gatekeepers, right? Sometimes it's just someone who's really lazy, works really slow. It happens, you know? And he gives you that feeling that he's diving deep into your issue and, and, and you're waiting and you're, you're so tense, you're waiting for his verdict. Well, he's just not efficient. And that's a big you talk problem. talk about the judge. Not the judge. Sometimes the it's, servant, it's a civil uh, servant, okay. and, and and he has an important, you know, um, authority to give you something, to decide on, on, on something, mm -hmm. to to enable you to continue to the next step. And sometimes this not being efficient trait is being interpreted by politicians as he is against me. 
He's mm-hmm. against me because he's on another, he has another ide- ideology and, and so forth. And I think that many um, of, of the clashes between politicians, all type of politicians that I've seen along the years, and civil servants or the, you know, the legal advisors, whatever, was more of a personal nature rather than a professional nature. But can it, can, you ran one of the biggest ministries in Israel. Yes. How many employees in the Ministry I of Justice? I had 7,000 employees when I left, and okay. my budget was 3 billion shekels and 40 different uh, branches, branches, departments. departments yeah. So, you know, one might say, how can, like, you, can you even produce, an, uh, is there such a thing even as an efficient government yes. branch? Because you cannot fire those people. Right, the okay. basic laws of, of of business is that if you don't have a stick, what's their incentive to be okay. efficient apart from their good mood this morning? I'll they tell you a it. secret. I'll tell you a secret. You can fire them, okay? And there is such a thing as a um, professional ability to manage. The thing is, and I'm saying that everywhere, and I'm feeling comfortable nowadays to say that, not, not only because you started with all those wonderful things that you said about me, thank you. I can say six years, you know, after I did, four years after I left, and I was a very good director general, but it is, it, it's not a coincidence, you know? I was raised within the ministry mm-hmm. and trained in order to become a manager, a director, and not only a professional in the field of law. What happens many, many times is that since the ministers have the right to bring a person they trust to be their director general, we know that many times they don't bring the right person. And then they don't know how to manage. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to get rid of people in the legitimate ways that we have. And like the popular talk is, oh my God, we can't get rid of those people. And in order to um, really have a productive ministry of 7,000 employees, of having 40 um, head of units, you know, some of them is called uh, the Attorney General, Shani Tzan, uh, the Public Defender at the time, uh, the head of uh, the patent, um, uh, authority, and so forth. You really have to have a method. It's not that, first of all, I used to, uh, I'm very uh, into transparency, uh, which is, I think is one of the signs of modern and good and uh, honest government. So I used to publish my uh, diary, my diary, my agenda yeah. uh, regularly mm-hmm. as, a, as a direct general. So you can see how much I worked. It's, it's hard work to really be on top of so many issues, but I, I really tried to choose the best managers I could. Obviously, I made mistakes sometimes like anyone else, but I really, really had amazing people. Some of them I brought from the private sector as opposed you know, to this theory that people cannot come from the outside and it's always only people from the inside. And I found amazing people within the ministry and other good people within the government. So it was, you know, it really enriched our uh, personnel. And I had a good system of supervising their work, Mm -hmm. uh, planning and so forth. So if you decided, if you decided you want to fire 1000 of the 7000, like Facebook and many other startup companies just did a few months ago, you couldn't have done it. You can call uh, the head of the budget division. He will tell you they always had like a um, plan for retirement, you know, because they always always wanted to encourage people to retire. And it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So we had a quota and I said, give me more. He said, I can't give you more, you know, because others want that as well, because that's a way of getting rid of people. I told him, I'll show you that I can, you know, part ways with as many people as I need to, and it will be beneficiary for everyone. And we did, because we we knew how to work. So it is, it's not thousand, because it's never, you know, in those numbers in mm-hmm. Israel. But yes, one year we... Uh, um, let go. Let go 80 people who were quite, 
you know, veterans in the government. Not veterans, because veterans are the ones yeah. who are already retired, but they were like, you know, they were for 20 years, 25 years. They had to go, and, and they were happy to go on those conditions, and mm -hmm. the younger people had the opportunity, you know, to get better uh, positions. It was really healthy for everyone, and we could start getting new people from the outside or to have less jobs, because sometimes we realize that we don't need that anymore. We had technology all of a sudden. We had uh, automated systems for all kinds of things. We changed, you know, mm -hmm. the conception of how and this was another reason to let people go, you know, because we needed technology to replace yeah. them. <clears throat> It, what I'm struggling to understand is the. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Why are you smiling? Why everyone uh, we, you is You know, depressed. I gave you the the yeah. uh, the wonderful <laughs> intro. I gave so you the camera. Gotta, yeah, you know, go ahead. Now I gotta give you. Too bad the you can't tell tip. our listeners that I lost weight and I look great and other things. <laughs> they can but see for so, themselves on YouTube. It's not politically correct, of course. I'm sorry. Don't say anything. But <laughs> it's the first time we met, they can't say that. Well, yeah, yeah. I would be. Yeah, I would yeah. I'm be just knocked kidding. Down. Just kidding. For, okay, so I what I'm struggling to understand is the, the fact that you say that only someone that really grows from within the system can not or, only no 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 absolutely not okay one of my best uh, friends was uh, my colleague from the ministry of tourism actually worked with Yariv Levin as uh, his director general was Amir Alevi okay he's actually the brother of Helti Alevi our chief commander and he came as a professional manager from the business sector by Uzilanda, Uzilanda was the Minister of Tourism who brought him. Yariv Levin, he, like we had a competition, who will stay longer? He beat me, he stayed almost nine years, all in, you know, with all the elections and, and, and everything. He's a great manager, he's a professional manager. He didn't grow within the government, but actually he worked for the Tel Aviv municipality with Ron Khuldai at the time. Mm -hmm. So he had some kind of notion of how public service looks like. So yes, but I, I really, I don't want to talk about people who are right now. Um, but, 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 dot, dot, dot. But, <laughs> but. Yeah. But do you, do you believe that Some of them are truly helpless. And it's very frustrating. And then it, it nurtures, you know, hatred and, and all kind of mythologies about, you know, public service. And, and also good people leave because when you have no one to look up to, you don't want to stay. If you're a real professional, you know, some some of the positions in the government are truly professional. For example, the, the head of the infrastructure in the Ministry of Transportation. You know, it's not something that you learn just from sitting on a chair for a while. You have to learn that. You have to understand transportation. You have to do a lot of things. When you get a director general who just six months ago the head of the civil service commissions said that he had no uh, capacity of being the director general, but he will allow him to be deputy for a while. And six months later, all of a sudden, he's eligible to run a budget of 54 billion shekels and be in charge of you and you and you and me standing or sitting in our cars in, in, in you know, on crowded roads for the next 10 years because we're losing years with unprofessional people. And we know that everyone in the Ministry of Transportation is leaving. That's that simple. So who should make the decision of who to, who should be sitting at the helm of these, these, these ministries, these departments? No, the ministers have the right to bring good people. But something has happened, you know, in those past years. They used to bring good people, and also the Civil Service Commission used to have some, you know, basic standards that you had to, uh, you know, you had to qualify in order to become a director general. And it changes. Uh, I, I want to say something. The current director general of the Ministry of Justice is not a lawyer and has no managerial experience. I heard that he's a super nice guy. Seriously, <laughs> no. You know, he could also be an evil guy. That's but what you say about a bad not, date. No, but I want to say how this is such a professional, really, such a professional ministry in order to be able to sit in a meeting with those head of units and to be able to ask them serious questions, you know, to understand what they're asking, to help them uh, 
create new strategies for the issues that they have to advance. How can you do that when you don't understand, you know, the, and, and, and the country is full of lawyers, you know, it wasn't that difficult to find someone that you trust. Not to mention the fact that if you want to run things as smoothly as possible, you want someone that will be respected and, and that will be able of, 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 you know, pushing things forward. So I think this is at the core of the issue. And this is a common uh, controversial issue in Israeli society today. I think it's probably one of the things that sits at the core of the debate ar around the judicial reform. Professionality? Is understanding. Is, you know, how can you sit at the helm of such a department if you're not even a lawyer? There are people that are professional that have devoted their entire life and they understand, they know things. Yeah. And you can't lead without knowing, knowledge. Uh, to me, it's always seemed like a bit of an ad hominem, meaning you, it's, it's a nice, almost uh, clever way of saying, you don't know what you're talking about. And, and so I wonder, look, I, I work at a company, I don't know if you'd appreciate me using him as an example, but I work right. at, a, at a company called Palo Alto Networks. I Nike happen to know Idan. So. Nikesha Oa, who's the CEO, uh, I don't know, some years now, mm -hmm. and has brought about like exceptional results, came with no cybersecurity background. Didn't know a thing about cybersecurity. Okay, what did he know? He came from business. He okay. was a CBO of Google mm -hmm. um, for 10 years, but he had no cybersecurity background. Didn't know a thing. And he's coming to lead the leading company in cybersecurity in the world. He's coming to tell people, with, you know, and I, I started there recently, and I can't tell you how complex and like just infinite of a, of a, yeah. of a subject matter cybersecurity is. It's just endless. Like, not First, to not to yeah. not to belittle any other, yeah. but I think it's one of the most complex uh, uh, subject matters on the planet. Okay. And he came to 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 tell people who have been doing this their entire lives what yeah. to do. Okay. First of all, having the capability of asking smart questions, having the capability of learning new things, having the capability of bringing perspectives from other lives, other experiences super important. I don't think that the only thing I can do is to manage the Ministry of Justice. And I've been doing a lot of other things ever since I left. But I do think that uh, professionality can be relevant. You will agree with me, okay? It's not necessary when you're a genius or when you have a really outstanding record. And by the way, at the same time, he could have failed just because, you know, but when you come to government and it has its own nature, you have to have something. Really, you don't have to be a lawyer. But it will help, by the way. Yelet Chaked was the Minister of Justice. She's an um, ele electricity engineer or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. She had a capability of learning and preparing herself. But on she judicial. had background in, star in high tech. Yeah, no, but on judicial issues, mm -hmm. we were shocked once we went with her to one of the most boring committees, I can't say who was heading it, one of the Supreme Court judges, really an extremely boring issue. And we were sure that she's gonna, just going to come, you know, the minister thing, she's going to say yes, it's very important to me, let me know what's going on, whatever. She asked him a specific question about something, a good question. We were like, oh my God. How, 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 how did you know that this is the right thing to say? Okay, so she's very smart, very dedicated, with a lot of abilities. Unfortunately, some of the people that I mentioned don't have anything that is outstanding. And I want to say another thing. Yeah. And the chaos of the political situation in Israel, and the chaos is not because of the ju judicial overall. The chaos started in 2018. We cannot afford what we call, um, you know, the schalimund, how do we say that? Uh, tuition. The tuition that we are paying with people who come and like, they're, they're like, okay, where do I start? We can't. And I expect my politicians, all of them, by the way, um, 
to try and do their best in order to diminish the damages of our sick political system. And it's sick, I think we agree. But I think the, the, the issue is that some people have different ideas of what is going to heal and remedy our, our not political, but our bureaucratic system. Right, our, our yeah. professional layer, uh, yeah. in the Hebrew you call it deriga mm -hmm. or right, the, the public There's a lot sector. There's a lot the public sector. Yeah. And it sounds to me like, it, and maybe we can agree on this, that it's less an issue of like, if you have the credentials, the hard credentials, the check boxes yeah. are all filled, and more about, are you a leader who knows how to think right? Let's agree that you would not let operate on your brain to someone who's not... Uh, doctor right yeah unless you're in the battlefield or whatever you know, but there's the famous saying it's not rocket science and i think maybe you know that's Good the luck. feeling maybe you should let tali gottlieb you know that's the feeling that uh, a lot of the, on the ride, right have to be the pilot a, be the pilot of your airplane and operate on your head. But good that's luck. What, so that's what I think the... Good and luck. I, I want to ask yeah. seriously, not just yeah. good luck. I want to get a, a, a real response yeah. to that. I think that's the feeling of a lot of people on the right that, w that, you know, there's a claim to professionalism that nobody else can really do my job. Why not? And... A lot of people can do... By the way, I said the country is full of lawyers. I didn't say you have to pick a lawyer. You ask me, do you have to be raised inside? No. Lucky me, I was. Lucky me, two ministers wanted my services and enjoyed them, and I did a good job. Definitely, you can bring a great lawyer or a mediocre lawyer who has, a, you know, managing skills and have a great director general. I'm just saying. But that's the that, thing. No, no, I just but, want to say yeah. something. This is, this, this is a little bit of a right thing issue in, in those past years, really to... Uh, undermine professionality and and i disagree with this first of all let's agree that if by any chance you're also a professional that's wonderful it's not something bad you, we don't have to despise people for having learned something practiced it and done it really really well right you, you spoke about the director general of the ju the ministry of justice today yeah, yeah. what is his background can you tell us I really don't want to get into that. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Okay. Let's talk about the, the reform. Okay. Um, what can be, can be said? <laughs> <laughs> it Isn't that boring? Said. Let's talk about the weather. <laughs> the weather. That's exciting. Look, it's not that boring because... Yes. Bec I have a lot to say about the reform. Because uh, it, it is like we are facing in a month's time, the whole Supreme Court is about to convene and we are heading to, to the edge of the cliff, maybe. Because yeah. if because if they they have there was an appeal against the first law of the reform that was just passed. Yeah. The law if aud yeah. the audience doesn't know the law yeah. there is a ability clause. Um, mm -hmm. And it was passed legally as a basic law mm -hmm. and the Supreme Court has never ruled down a basic law. And now they're going to convene in the full, uh, like f all 15 yeah. judges. Yeah. And they took the case, which is already something that people raised an eyebrow. Yeah. And potentially they can rule out this law that, deal that talks about them. And yeah. this will bring us into this black hole, uh, constitutional black hole. Yeah. So what would, what would you do if you were the Supreme Court judge? You are much younger than I am. Although it doesn't show, but, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just I'm tired. I told you that oh, before, yeah. so I'm just helping myself to stay uh, on top of things. I don't know if you remember, but at my time we had an oral exam in English, and okay. the instructions were: it doesn't matter what they're going to ask you, prepare something at home, and just talk about it. It's going to be okay. Okay. So when we talk about the judicial reform, the first thing I want to say, and I'm saying it in every opportunity I have to speak, and I speak a lot on media and so forth, really, honestly, there is a lot to do about the judicial system in Israel. Actually, a lot of, I have a lot of bad things to say about many, many issues. This reform, right now, the way it is, doesn't give a damn. Is it legitimate to say that? Yeah. Doesn't give a damn about the citizens. Okay, it's all about the politicians and their need of power, which is legitimate. But when the system suffers from so many problems, 
I think it would be elegant to start with many, many, many things that could have been running already, you know, by the Minister of Justice. And in the meantime, go ahead with your judicial reform. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. But first, give me an A, you know, for this wonderful, elaborated <laughs> idea. I want to give you I, a D, but I want to give you, okay. I want to let no, you I'll tell you why. First. No, I'll, yeah. t- I'll tell you why. Because when I was, you know why I was a good director general? Yeah. Because this was like a huge ministry, okay? And I managed to convince 7,000 employees all over the country to understand the values that I want us to promote. And the first of them was, um, we are here to serve the little citizen. I said in Hebrew, okay? the, mm-hmm. the simple citizen, mm-hmm. the one that is really helpless, you know, when he faces bureaucracy, institutions, and so forth. And I have a million ways of encouraging you to do that, okay? I will give uh, all the, um, how do you say that? Um, incentives? All the incentives to people who will promote you know, the betterment of, of, uh, um, service, of, of service, yeah. um, the uh, accessibility of all kinds of services, and so forth. Okay. So it is an important principle. By the way, the second principle was one that I said in my uh, uh, first speech, and I quoted, and this is also something about my opinion about the judicial system, I quoted Newton, who said that men build too many walls and not enough bridges. And I came to build bridges. To say that in Salahadin Street, in front of all the gatekeepers who were educated to build walls, you know, this is like the mm-hmm. idea of being a the good... fortress. A fortress, mm-hmm. right? And I said, no, 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 no. I said, we are going, I'm going to be a bridge. And I'm going to try and make all of us bridges, which means we're going to open the doors. And let the Trojan horse inside. Not the Trojan horse. (laughs) We're going to enable the government, the politicians, to advance the reasons for which they were elected. Okay? And now to your question. Yes. First of all, I have one positive thing to say about the 15 judges who are going to sit together. It's going to look like a party on one hand, you know, like a farewell party. To Supreme George, Pres- um, Supreme the, Court, uh, the president, the head, yeah. the president, uh, yeah. Esther Khayyut. The really positive thing that's going to happen that maybe the common lie that the Supreme Court is um, biased, not biased, leftist, not <laughs> diverse <laughs> at all, okay. <clears throat> will be in everybody's faces. And if you need help, so I really need the water. <clears throat> we will do the humiliating act of putting a little post-its on their forehead and say, oh, she's Moroccan. Oh, he's Iraqi. That's not oh, the diversity we're looking wait, wait, for. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, he lives in a settlement. Oh, he is Arab. Okay. Oh, she wrote in a verdict that actually, as opposed to what, you know, nowadays, you know, the joke in Israel is that anyone who doesn't support Netanyahu is leftist. You know, even, uh, what's the guy of Lehava? What's his name? Uh, the one who doesn't like Bensi it. Gopshin. Bensi, Bensi Gopshin. Yeah, you know, if yeah. he doesn't support, uh, if he will say something against uh, Netanyahu, he will be accused of being a leftist. So seriously, seriously, you know, when you look, when we will look at them, you know, this truly big um, tribunal. No, lie, misinformation, uh, false allegations. Maybe for a moment it will be a little bit more difficult, you know, to continue saying that. And now to your question. Okay. Um, I'm happy that I'm not a Supreme Court judge, judge. I never wanted to be, and I would never want to be in that situation. I heard, uh, I'm, I'm sitting as a panelist in the um, Channel 13 uh, morning show, so Supreme former Supreme Court Judge uh, Meltzer mm-hmm. came today and he explained what are the possible reasons to intervene. I hope I can say that in English. Mm-hmm. One of them is a technical problem. For example, if the president would have not signed the official law. Mm-hmm. Okay, who knew? 
The second that we have already experienced in another law is the fact that the process of uh, um, legislation was um, unreasonable. Uh, no, <laughs> unlawful, incomplete, wrong. We saw that in the law of uh, yeah. taxation of a third uh, apartment, apartment tax. tax. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's not it's not a precedent if that would be. And I want to say that the chair of the parliament committee, uh, Simcha, Simcha Rotman, Rotman, didn't make an effort even to show. Uh, patience, openness, dialogue, and, and you know what? All very measurable and, things. No, but I, I want to say mean, something. I really want to say something serious. I Rarely I criticize on gender issues, but you know, when people, when they started, Yariv Levin and, uh, and Simcha Rotman, and they started badly, you know, aggressively, you know, they overdid it. And I really spontaneously, I said, they should have had a woman on their team, you know, someone who would give them some, you know, um, emotional intelligence on how you go forward. That's kind of offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that women and men complete each other. I know that it's really, you know, it's, it's not modern to say that. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. The audience in the U.S., it's whatever. In Israel, it's still common to say that yeah. and to think like that. So I hope I didn't offend anyone. But no, I think, fine. I do think that, you know, I'm different. I'm, I want to talk about myself. Women I, have EQ, men have higher IQ. Sometimes. Really? Sometimes. You stand behind that? Yes. Especially, especially when they are in position of power. Mm. When they are in a position of power, it's, you know, I think that men, even when they have EQ, it's so tempting just to take advantage of the power you have. And I think that women, even when they are in a position of power, they remember that using their EQ and, and by the way, it's been researched, analyzed, you know, uh, for example, uh, the, 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 the impact of women on boards. And, mm. you know and uh, it, it it it's it has been proven that uh, when women are sitting on boards there will be more collaboration between board members more collaboration in, in within the company they will promote that mm -hmm. um and less uh you know yeah. infighting but I, I derailed this a bit so you're saying the first issue was so te technical, technical let's, let's okay. put, put it away the second is the process whether the process was right yeah. the and the third which is interesting i hope um, is uh, i'll try to translate it it's a possibility that uh, um the parliament has taken advantage of its constitutional uh, constitutional uh, uh yeah he misused 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 yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Their, thank you so much their, in in the way yeah. that uh for example misused their what wait wait asamkhuta mekhonenet asamkhuta mekhonenet their authority their their it's constitutional authority mm -hmm. in what does what does it mean I don't for know example no no i just want to say for right. example i want to legislate a law that my son will be the prime minister, and I declare that this is a basic law. Because if it's a basic law, the Supreme Court cannot intervene. So if you chose something that is not eligible to be called a basic law, because not everything should be, we don't have a constitution, right? So not everything should be a basic law. And I heard, I'm not, I'm really not that uh, into every uh, legislation that is being promoted now. Uh, but I heard that there was like a commentary about uh, the basic law of the study of Torah, which is also not supposed to be a basic law, but it was uh, suggested that way in order to prevent the Supreme Court from intervening. Okay. But, but I also heard a commentary that people assume that at the end of the day, they will not. Uh, they won't dare to open this. Uh, not, not they won't dare. Uh -huh. They will analyze it with their tools. I hope they will argue a lot and write 
all kinds of opinions. But ultimately, they will make a but, professional yes, decision. Yes, by the way, I have an interesting commentary okay. to make that nobody did today somehow. Hmm. I was surprised. I mean, everyone praised, uh, many people praised the Chayut for choosing the, all of the 15. I mean, not doing the mistake of choosing 11. And then people would say, why did she leave out four? She wanted to influence the bottom line. But actually, this is a reference to the big debate that we had just five months ago about the law of uh, of uh, Yeah, the over override clause. The override clause when the original uh, um, legislation by Levin and, and Rotman was only by 15. Yes. And, and there was a huge debate. Oh, no, 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 no. It can't be only 15. We should allow also 12 or 11 or whatever. And all of a sudden, she does that reference, you know. But on, in the end of the day, I don't in know your if it's opinion, in order to please them, you know, whatever, or just to be on the safe side and say, this is the way I want to finish my... In your opinion, in our democracy, in our system... Still democracy. Still democracy. But fragile. Who should have the final word? Who should have the final word? The judge or the people? Via elections. Assuming the elections is free. I have a lot of respect. And I, of course, I have a lot of respect to my own little vote. You know, I, I, I never gave up my uh, right to vote. Um, and I respect, I've always respected, you know, the result of elections in Israel. I've never doubted them. I never. It's not a clear answer because um, obviously uh, policies are being led by politicians. They should be led only by politicians. Policy, medinut, tzibuit, okay? priorities led by politicians is there a possibility that a politician will make a mistake or do something wrong or do something against the law and although he was elected the court has the authority to generally speaking i'm not getting now into the issues of basic laws but basically don't we believe i'm, I'm like surprised the two of you are looking at me. It's quite square. Look at the camera. <laughs> they don't know how we're trying to see the what look, <laughs> the, the eyes that you are giving me. To see what I'm like, we're I'm concentrating. Now this is yeah. like, you know, the that, build up. The build up. You is know, that's very... people who are interrogated in police stations. Uh -huh. We say in Hebrew, yeah, you know, they're talking it. to the lamp. They're talking to the lamp. Yeah. The flash is a little bit like in the police station. You know, the, oh, yeah. the same type of light, which is not very flattering. Yes. I can try and block yes, it for you. Yes. The bad cop was the good cop. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. Right. Good Give idea. us an answer. <laughs> yes. Well, it's not a I, the type of answer you're asking me, and yeah, also, yeah. I want to say something. We just want you to solve the problem. That's, yeah. No, uh, but I want to say there is not a final. This is not a dictatorship, really. The final say. What do you mean the final say? We are human. Humans make mistakes. Unfortunately, I want to say that our politicians for the past many years, I don't want to be precise, have not been, you know, above and beyond, um, you know, suspicion of their motives, of the way that, you know, of working by the book. That's in uh, your opinion. Yeah. It's Subjective, subjective, Opinion, very subjective uh, uh, statement. No, I think that uh, I still believe that a court verdict against a minister, for example, the 53 cases of uh, our Minister of Interior National uh, Security, you know, he's not as clean as I am in terms, you know, we would be really naughty. I said, oh, because I've never been caught. No. No. Because I've never... Uh, you were I, never charged with a crime. I did drive a bit, you know, faster than I'm allowed to. No, I'm not that saint, you know. Mm -hmm. But I never did the things that he did. And yet he is a minister. So, 
and of course Derry. I'm sorry, Derry, which is in my opinion one of the smartest, not only smartest, he's a good polit- I think he's a good politician in many, many, many ways. I was happy to have him on government. I was the director of the Department of Pardons. I was very impressed and happy that he came back to politics 20 years, almost 20 years after he was convicted and he had like that you know the time of the time of limitation. The period of limitation mm-hmm. has passed and for me it was like a beautiful you know closure that he sinned he paid his you know duties to society he did his time he waited all those years and came back I had no problem you know there was a big debate in Israel whether he can come back to the place where he failed you know exactly the Ministry of Interior but I Here is, for example, my opinion about our judicial system. And then he did another mistake, okay? And then the Attorney General, Mandelblit, instead of, you know, dealing with this in a reasonable time, mm-hmm. okay, held it for years. Is, you know, for this years was my years. example from yeah. the beginning. Yes. It was on his table for six years. Mm-hmm. This is unforgivable, in my opinion. Yes. And then the result is so... It, it, crooked? But, but people, or, but people yeah. voted for these people. I mean, they, they represent... Look, this is... Uh, I, I admit that maybe I'm missing something. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, I'm going to give maybe a bad example. Okay. I think they feel a little bit comfortable because I, I cannot imagine who is the audience and they're far away in the US, not people they're going to meet in the street next week. Well, yeah, so we had, listeners. hopefully, but I'm going to be in the US twice in the okay. coming months, so maybe, please don't identify me. Um, there is a famous singer in Israel who had been accused time and time again of uh, having Eyal Golan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yes. of uh, having relationships with minors, with our whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay? My daughter was 28 already. Every time she heard him on the radio, she would push the button and move to the other, to another station. On the other hand, and, and, and there are a lot of issues. I mean, time and time again, the investigations against him are opening up. Yeah, he okay? was never... He was never, uh... he was never accused, but he definitely has... Yeah, he probably has, I don't want to say definitely. It's, more, it's a moral it's question. It's a moral question. It's a moral yes. question. Does she okay? do the same for Michael Jackson? Wait a second. Okay. When, <laughs> actually she has very interesting ideas about uh, alternatives to jurisdiction. You know, um, we had a very interesting argument at the time when a very promising uh, politician who is now very promising, not very promising, a very good TV host, Uh, resigned from Parliament after being accused of sexual harassment mm-hmm. by a post on, mm-hmm. on a post on Facebook Inon Magal, yes. Inon Magal, and he resigned and that was that and uh, she gave me a lecture and I and I said you know he was just a suspect you know you have a, a innocence um, Innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're supposed to be in our system innocent until proven guilty and, and to bring evidence and so forth. And I said, you as my daughter should not <clears throat> be happy of this, uh, you know... Um, the j- jury of uh, the, public opinion. Yeah, yeah the, jury, the, the jury of uh, public opinion. Mm-hmm. And she said, listen, when it comes to... It wasn't even, it wasn't sexual harassment, it was... It was uh, verbal. It, it was verbal. verbal. It was, it was verbal. sexual harassment, no, but, but verbal. No, but it was verbal. What I want yes. to say, it was verbal. But it was an em- employee under him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she said, oh. when this is a situation, she said, that was her analysis when she was 20. She said, from research that I read, uh, 95% of the complaints of women are correct. So if a woman, especially when she's uh, not anonymous, she's willing to, you know, to, to, to talk in her own voice... accuses him of this and he retires your legal system is not interesting I don't care about police investigation he also never denied I, it I don't need trial for me the fact that he admitted and he paid immediately a price that's enough 
but but Amy, we're digressing. I want to yeah. get back to dairy. Wait, wait but you were you were about to tell us about Eyal Golan. No, we were talking about dairy and the fact that he was. I, I, I the, want, the people okay. were elected. The people yeah. elected. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. I want, just yeah. about dairy. Let's, yeah. Yeah. let's just. Wait, let, but I want to yeah. I want to understand why yeah. it's illegitimate that these no, people w- are so representatives. I, no, I want to say something. It's a huge question, you know, when a person, as I said, is extremely intelligent and a good politician and has a lot of charisma, okay? And he's been uh, leading and, and really has a, a, a lot of influence on, on, on this party and, and whatever. And people are voting for him because they like him and because he's charismatic. Now, if he would have been... Um, indicted of sexual um, um, offenses, would we also say, well, but the people wants him there. And when there is a... Okay. If, he's a if he's legally allowed to? Uh, now, great answer. When the law in Israel says that until the period of limitation has not went by, you can be elected to the parliament, but, but you not cannot the... be a minister, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Be in the parliament, be the leader of your party, be one of the leaders of the coalition, if you're on the coalition. Be a person that the prime minister consults on everything, but it's the law before that, it's not, a, it's not a law that we passed after you've been elected just because we want to block you. And frankly, as much as I really hate how this process went by, the fact that six years had to go by, and then there was this plea bargain, whatever. He wasn't being completely honest when he did the plea the bargain, and when, and, and when he uh, declared that he's retiring from political life. So maybe he thought that it's going to take another four years until the next election, so this means I'm retired and I'll come back on the next elections. But to come back 10 months later and say, oh, court, oh, judge, it's okay. So I said that I'm retiring, but actually I'm back. And the law says that you can't. So yes, it's a But the laws can price. be changed by Absolute, the people. Absolutely. So that brings us back I to agree. the original question. So yes. in Derry's case, yeah. if the people say, we want him to be a minister, period. Yeah. We want him. Mm-hmm. So who should have the final word? The people or the judge, the judges? Are we going to talk about the clause of reasonability? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, these are issues that I never talk about. Okay. You know why? Because there are smarter people who talk about this. And I really believe that each one of us should be in charge of something in our society and take care of it. But and the were... fact that everyone is, is all of a sudden an expert, just like you said, an expert on constitutional law. Well, I've never been. And I still am not. And I really think that there could have been so many important things to talk about and to be concerned with. And, and I really, really, honestly, I don't know, I, I've never met you two before. So it's really difficult to convince you to let go and to accept the fact that I do criticize, and in spite of the fact that I think that there are enormous problems, and I agree. That we have, uh, uh, you know, the separation of powers in Israel is not good. We don't have a constitution. The parliament is extremely weak, and it doesn't do its job in supervising the government. But I believe that the judicial system is one of the less corrupt institutions in Israeli society. Unfortunately. I don't think highly of our politicians. I'm actually disappointed with what, not the ones right now, okay? Generally speaking. But you keep calling them, and this is a question I asked yeah. quite a few of our guests, you keep yeah. calling them a pol- politicians. Are you, are you, do you consider yourself a politician? No. Why? I never went for office. But that's not really, the, I mean, if we're gonna talk about professionalism, that's mm-hmm. not their official title. They're not uh, polit. They're not considered politicians. The ministers. They're elected officials. 
If, what, first what, of all, what if does it not, matter? Um, maybe I'm missing something in English. What's the I think uh, politicians. This is like no the in word Hebrew, that I use in Hebrew as politikaim? well. You can say politikaim or nifcharei oh. tzibur. Okay, so you. So I'm wondering why mm. the use of the word politician. Oh. Like why? What? No, no, no. They're, they're not politicians. They're elected officials. And I think it, it kind of to me, it always feels like a comfortable uh, way of saying you know these are politicians. No, 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 no. I even. I, Actually, I have the opposite to tell you. Okay. I lecture in many uh, uh, leadership programs. Yeah. And I insist on telling people that we tend to accuse our politicians of being political or making political decisions. And I say, this is ridiculous. They are elected on a certain agenda It is their duty to, you know, do what they promised. And we should never accuse them by doing this, that they are doing, uh, you know, they are making political decisions. Of course, we should expect them to be able to take care of, you know, the general interest. Okay. But, But if the general interest contradicts no, their constituency's interest. So I'm going to say Yes, they do have, they want to prioritize. The, the whole idea of being elected is that you, you know, you run because you said, I'm going to prioritize those issues. And yes, you have to do that. When I say, for, I'll take something neutral, okay, in order to try and explain myself. For example, you want to be uh, the Minister of Education. And you say, when I will come to be the Minister of Education, I want to promote... Uh, The studies of uh, Bible, Jewish heritage, whatever. You have the complete right to put more budgets or change, uh, you know, uh, educational plans on those issues. You are still obliged to make sure that there will be budget to learn mathematics, languages, <coughs> whatever is, you know, the, the history, whatever, and For example, to take care of the education of Arabs, Druze, whatever, who are not supposed to, 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 you know, to study, uh, you know, Jewish studies, whatever. That's, that's the point. I try to But take so I'm, Because at the beginning of the conversation, yeah. you, you mentioned that the politicians are passing this reform as politicians. As like for, the, them. for them, no, 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 for, for them, for, for them, them. Yeah, yeah. Yes, for us. So which is thing. which is I think the epitome of accusing uh, them of political interests and agendas. So no, I, I no, want... no, 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 no. You're misinterpreting. Okay. Me. No. I am doing a comparison between uh, taking care really of so many needs of the population, and you know that this is. A very common criticism about this government that for the past six months, and this is why we saw all of a sudden this week a lot of publications on important legislation and all on a variety of issues, okay? Because the government... Criticism from the left. No, 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 no. Criticism from many... Listen, actually, I, I said that this morning that when I saw that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu published on Twitter a list of... Uh, Of, goals of not goals ah, new, new accomplishment. ah, accomplishments yeah. uh, agenda you know, the, um, electronic bracelet and uh, yeah. something that had to do with the protection uh, um, punishment whatever mm -hmm. I said wow this is a good moment I want to praise uh, Prime Minister because this means that he wants to show that he's back to business of taking care of what we like to call in Hebrew the life itself okay mm -hmm. and this is my criticism my criticism is but that that's not what i voted for him wait 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 or no. the, the people voted my, for him wait wait a moment first of all and it has I been analyzed <laughs> it has been analyzed time and time again that the major issue the top topics of the past elections were um the um, cost of living The economy, yeah. Uh, Michelut, uh, the, sovereignty. the security, sovereignty, sovereignty, sovereignty in terms of governance and 
uh, internal security. Enforcing the law. Uh, enforcing the law. Yeah, but since when do Wait. we no, no, no. compare no, because you promises said, to... No, we, first of all, we just said a moment ago, we want them to do what they promised us to do. Yes. Okay, and this is not being political. Yes, they are politicians. They have to. And I'm just saying to your argument... Um, the promises were other. So when I say... Why, well, Yariv Levin won first in the primaries of the Likud. I know, he's I know, been, but... He's running on this agenda Yeah, alone. but I'm... I'm Gallant not, listen, spoke about listen, it. Listen, seriously. Okay. I'm not a politician. And I'm, we're not leading this discussion on Twitter. And ah, you said this? No, I said that? No, oh, let's see what were his tweets. Ten months ago, I, I really am fed up with this, personally. Not interesting. I'm just saying, in my opinion as a citizen who has all kinds of needs, as a former um, civil servant who has a perspective on too many problems. By the way, if Yariv Levin would have gone with this uh, judicial overhaul and in the meantime would have done one thing, you know what? I would like him to ask Mrs. Uh, Supreme Court uh, Mr. Khayut. Mr. Khayut to give him every month the list of verdicts cases who are waiting more than six months for a verdict no, just a list okay because i was very impressed when i had a chicken did that once and all of a sudden all the judges across the country realized for a moment that a verdict has to be given maybe it's not uh, within 45 days i think this is uh, the what the law says but you cannot let you know those decisions lie for ages okay but you, uh, you talked about building bridges we don't yeah. have much time left too and bad. i don't want to press you too much on this but i do think your opinion is very important okay. because yeah you were there there are not many people mm -hmm. in israel who like most people who talk about it about this whole issue are i don't feel they know much about it about, about the legal overall about, about the whole about the, the problem over? about yeah. the problems okay. about the, they all i agreed it, i just said yes. everyone all of a sudden became there are very few expert. people who were there yeah. who experienced it firsthand who know mm -hmm. it now okay you come and say uh i think the the reform should have been other things more important things for the people and i as as a right-wing voter yeah. come and say i think that this exact reform if it's a re is is for the people is for me and that's what i voted okay. for so c can you accept it can you can you can can we you know i'm trying to to yes i you know um one time can you accept like that other people yes i saw a um, member of parliament of the mm -hmm. uh, on an interview and you know this stupid uh, discussion about the identity of the supreme court judges started and he said something that really touched me. He said, oh, it doesn't matter. He said, I want to see myself within the court. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could understand that. I, and I identify with this. And I said, it's too bad that he didn't see himself till now within the court. And I, I, I worked a lot when I was in, in the government and promoting diversity within the government. And I wanted people who come from the periphery. I wanted to to accept people who came from colleges and not from universities. And I wanted, of course, to accept Arabs and ultra-Orthodox and Israelis of Ethiopian descent and so forth. But when I heard a member of Parliament Boaron saying that, I was about to say back to him, I also want to see myself. And I can't see women anymore. I can't. In important positions when I look at this government. Because good women like um, Tayri Fargan, who was uh, the head of the... Um, yeah, one of the ministries, right? That was, Avodah, was, Mr. Avodah. She, yeah, the minister of... Zorah Avodah of uh, employment. Yeah. She was in charge. She's, she's, she was fired. She's a wonderful, she's a wonderful, wonderful um, official. Mm -hmm. She just won... By the way, speaking of basic rights, okay, she has just won the position and she was supposed to keep it for four years because, you know, um, a lot in her background was completely aligned 
with a Shas ideology, and this is the Shas ministry. She was raised in Ramle, you know, she's... And I said to myself, I can accept, accept, you know, I can be sad about this, but I can accept that Shas decided not to elect to themselves women as director generals. But if you inherited one, and she is completely in your ideology, and, and it's like, it was like known, you know, that why fire her? I was, and, and of course it was in the context of seeing hardly any women as director generals. The first was the one of Galit Distal, of a super small ministry, actually a non-existing ministry. And the mm -hmm. second was the one of Mai Golan. So great but it's nothing and they're meaningless. And I know and I can analyze what it means that women are not there, you know, around the table. And also the ministers are of, except for Miri Regev, in my opinion, if I'm not mistaken, all of the rest, are min which, which has the important ministry of transportation. You're talking about the big ministries. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it means it, it will affect women it will affect women in Israel. I believe in this. But that's so, what women voted no, for. No, so I just want to say, when you ask me again, do I understand some of uh, the needs of the right wing in terms of the judicial overhaul? Yes. Do I feel that I don't trust the process? I don't trust the intentions? I'm really a person who trusts. I'm not a paranoid I really trust people. Listen, I was the director of the Mar Department of Pardons. I worked with prisoners my entire, you know, 14 years. Mm -hmm. So I have the capability of seeing the best in people, okay? And I've worked with so many politicians, including some of which are still um, elected officials. <laughs> Yes. I'm doing Thank this you. gesture. Thank you. No, no, it was really, you know what, this is, you know, this is a typical, interesting, example of lack of communication it never occurred to me to use another word it's like the natural word and yes it means something else to call them elected officials and i completely agree and support that probably i will continue to say politicians it's shorter and i will no, I, catch myself, I catch myself saying politicians yeah. okay. all the time but, but i'm i'm i, I'm, I really insist officials. on not blaming elected officials of doing what they were elected for it's it's really this is something that has went that went wrong in Israeli discourse. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that if you do what you promise to do, but you deny they were elected to do this reform. In the same I'm time, I'm not deny. I'm not denying. I I I feel uncomfortable with the way it is going, and where it is going, and it's. I'm I'm very upset. I'm upset. I'm I look happy now because I'm so tired and you are nice people <laughs> and, and it's had a great a couple of figs and, and, and we had a great intro maybe yeah. we can finish <laughs> reading it all over again <laughs> you know but um, I, I I want to say something the situation in Israel is not good okay I am very active on supporting the Haredi um, population to integrate and to promote its rights and whatever. I think that something has become a little bit cynical in terms of the relationships between the groups within the Israeli society. And I am on the side that is, first of all, a descendant of Holocaust survivors and people, my parents were persecuted by every regime that came to Romania, the monarchy, fascism, Nazism, and communism. So for me to live in a Jewish democratic state, in that order, Jewish democratic state, is on the one hand something that I'm not taking for granted, and also it is something that I'm willing to work for in order to make it work. But I expect everyone living here who cares about the future of the Jewish people to be part of that effort. And I'm not a socialist. 
in terms of a communist, you know, I don't expect everyone, you know, to do exactly the same and, and whatever. But I find it difficult to accept that uh, some people are exempted from too many things. Not only the Haredi, others as well. So, yes, I'm concerned. Well, we didn't we didn't have time to talk about uh, the meta board um, maybe next time yeah, if you yeah, yeah it's worth a separate it's worth discussion. yeah let's do another sometime come again and we'll yeah. do zero politics and only like like they say on Facebook we're in a relationship <laughs> <laughs> just please please don't get this episode kicked off Facebook <laughs> Ooh, now I understand why you invited me yeah. I just yeah. want it we have I a different work, episode actually now but i don't work for facebook yeah, yeah. We, are, we are an independent Which body is, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what this will be like next on soap okay yes cliffhanger back. a little okay. teaser come thank back. you so much for coming there and engaging with us we really appreciate it okay and um anything else no That's thank it. you so thank much thank you so much really, for really, coming really. Thank, thank you thank you for disagreeing in such a lovely way <laughs> <laughs> thank with you. all thank the, you for suffering us the right things <laughs> that I've been saying <laughs> thank you bye guys thank you bye bye